There's a common argument among Flat Earthers that there is no gravity, but instead what we experience is the result of buoyancy, which doesn't make sense because buoyancy requires gravity, but I digress. Here's a video. However, let's take a look at what the difference is between real science and the abstract mathematics which tells us we're on a ball. No, the concept of gravity isn't merely abstract. There are tests that we can and have performed that show that this is an actual phenomenon. Is simply an abstract mathematical concept. It is not science, it is pseudo-science, because there is nowhere that we can see that mass attracts mass. Actually, we can see mass attract mass. Take a look at this. Now we put another ball on the left side of each of the two original ones. If everything attracts everything else, the balls should attract each other and the bar should move. There is an attraction of gravity between the lead balls. That is commonly called the Cavendish experiment which flat earthers are aware of and they readily reject. I'm not exactly sure why the only argument I've seen was argumentum ad lapidum, but if I can find any proper criticisms of it, then I will cover that in a later video. So we are told that because this uh, one liter of water has a mass that is being attracted to the mass of the earth, which therefore gives it its weight, one kilogram, that this is proof of gravity. This is just a description of what we can call gravity, but what we cannot prove scientifically is that it is the mass of the Earth making this water weigh one kilogram. Well, actually... First, we weigh a small lead pyramid to measure the force of attraction between it and the Earth. Its weight is 152.166 grams. Now we move the heavy lead ball under the scale, adding its mass to the mass of the Earth. The weight has increased by one thousandth of a gram, which represents the attraction between the pyramid and the ball. When the mass under the pyramid got bigger, the force of attraction did too. See, we do have genuine proof that mass is attracted to mass. I can add a force and push it down. Isn't that interesting? I push down this and it becomes heavier. So what does the orange really weigh? Once you're weighing it in water, it's a little bit different, isn't it? No, it doesn't become heavier. Weight isn't the only way to change the number that a scale reads. You know that, right? Maybe you adding an additional force changes what the scale reads. Let's try with our ball. Earth. Doesn't weigh much in the water. And once it's submerged, there is no more force. So you can see my hand going in makes no difference. It's submerging the ball and keeping it down requires a certain amount of force. What's happening there is the water pushing back? Is gravity pushing back? Is the mass of the Earth pushing back? What's happening? We're thinking about. Okay, here's what's going on. The buoyancy force is equivalent to the overall weight of the water that would be in the volume of the object that is displacing it. So when you push down this ball, you are displacing more water with this object that is less dense. So the buoyancy force is overall greater. And since you're constantly pushing down to counteract this upward force, 
it moves the scale down. Displacing more water creates a higher buoyancy force. That's it. That's all that's going on here. This has nothing to do with whether or not masses attract each other. So yeah, changing the forces within an object on top of a scale can indeed change what the scale reads. What's your point? The main point I wanted to make in this video, though, was when we take something fragile like a plant that stands up in the air and we have two kilograms of water that is supposedly pushing down its weight on the earth because of the mass of the earth attracting it then if I put this plant in it is not squashed or crushed by the weight of the water this could be miles under the surface of the ocean and it would be having no problem standing up against all the weight of the water it's just relative density how do you know have you been miles under the surface of the ocean and have you noticed you know the exact same plant doing that or is there totally different types of plants that grow there? Look, the plant that you have is not going to be crushed by that amount of water, because that doesn't add a significant amount of pressure to the plant. But there definitely is a significant increase of water pressure miles and miles and miles below the surface of the ocean. Well, how do you explain this change of pressure as you go lower and lower into the ocean? Because it definitely does exist, it definitely is measurable. But how does that change without gravity? And this difference in pressure is what causes buoyancy in the first place. Again, you can ask, what is keeping the water stuck to the Earth? We know that water has magnetic properties. And we can also ask questions like, where's the edge of space? Where does that end? What holds space in its place? Nobody knows. We can't answer it unless we start using abstract mathematical concepts. And to tell us that we are on a ball that is spinning through the vacuum of space is not scientific. Because although we can talk about density, and we can talk about forces, we have nothing in science that tells us that mass attracts mass. Yes, we do have tests that show that mass attracts mass. And we also have equations that are based on other things that we can observe that also do infer that mass attracts mass. This is scientific. It is. Y you don't get off by just saying that it's not. We have an attraction to the Earth and we do not really know what that is, but it's certainly not because the Earth is a particular mass. You know, nothing that you've done here actually disproves that. Nothing that you've demonstrated shows that, hey, we're not attracted to other masses. Y you haven't. What? So we have in this pseudoscience of the globe, we have pilfering of real science and adaptation to a mathematical formula that is just abstract. Well, you know this mathematical formula is actually based on things that we can observe and do observe, right? We didn't just pull it out of our ass, it came from somewhere. It came from science. You know that, right? We have the inverse square law of magnetism or electromagnetism or light. And this can be adapted and used for anything, except in the case of the globe, it's been used and adapted to something that we cannot ever prove, create, manipulate in any scientific way. There is nothing to tell us that mass attracts mass. Yes, there is. I've already shown you two tests that shows this. But here's some more. But it would be interesting, wouldn't it? Once you break free from the idea that we are in a solar system being flung about a sun, we are free to think of other ideas, such as maybe we are 
on a piece of earth that is floating in an infinite plane of water. So once you are free from these scientific ideas, we can consider things that maybe water is the most common thing in the universe and we are just a bubble or a plane of matter semi-submerged in an infinite plane of water. Okay, sure, but if you reject that as well, then you can believe in other crazy bullshit. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video.